the next topic is reflection of plane wave at oblique incidence so what is the oblique incidence so let's write the oblique incident definition and how do we define the oblique incidence for the two different type of polarization as we have studied the normal incidence and in normal incidence we derived the formula for a reflection coefficient and a transmission coefficient similarly we have to derive here also the formula for reflection coefficient and how to write the uh, wave equation and how to calculate the transmission coefficient so first of all we will write the definition of plane of incidence because the oblique incidence is also known as plane of incidence so oblique incidence is also referred to as plane of incidence so plane of incidence is defined as plane containing propagation of incident wave plane containing propagation of incident wave and unit normal vector to the boundary unit normal vector to the boundary i will explain this thing later on but for time being just try to understand that what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is nothing but you have to consider a plane in which the wave should be incidenting and that plane should also have a unit vector normal to the boundary so they obviously there will be a interface or a boundary which separates the two region because then only we are having the reflection or transmission so we whenever there is a two medium and the there is a some interface or the plane which is separating the two medium is called boundary so here we are saying that a plane should be there and the plane can be drawn in the 2d that means on the paper or on the board i will say on the board if i will draw the figure in such a way that the plane wave which is traveling is lying in the board and also it contains the unit vector normal to the boundary will be called as plane of incidence so there are two type of plane of incidence there are two types of oblique incidence first one is parallel polarization and the definition of parallel polarization is if electric field of if electric field of uniform plane wave is parallel to the if electric field of uniform plane wave is parallel to the plane of incidence is parallel to the plane of incidence it is called parallel polarization just note it down because i will explain everything in detail just i am telling you the basic definitions so there are two types of oblique incidence first one is the parallel polarization if the electric field of the uniform plane wave which is traveling in the plane of incidence is lying or is parallel to the boundary or is parallel to the in fact boundary i should say uh, okay is parallel to the plane of incidence it is called parallel polarization okay now the second one is perpendicular polarization if if the electric field of uniform plane wave if electric field of uniform plane wave
is perpendicular to the is perpendicular to the plane of incidence it is called perpendicular polarization so this is the definition of oblique incidence that is plane of incidence and their types now we have to define all these things so let's define that and for that we have to consider first a plane of incidence or any plane wave should always satisfy the maxwell equation so it should also satisfy the maxwell equation so the maxwell equation for a plane wave is curl of Uh, sorry divergence of e is equal to 0 divergence of h equal to 0 curl of e is equal to minus j omega mu h and curl of h is equal to sigma plus j omega epsilon e so the oblique incidence which we consider is actually based only for the lossless medium so we will not be having any loss in the medium so that means the sigma will be zero so oblique incidence is considered only for sigma equal to zero so when we put sigma equal to zero this maxwell equation is j omega epsilon e now since the plane wave is traveling in the plane of incidence it is a having a propagation vector that means it is lying in the plane itself so that means there may be a vector quantity that is incident propagation vector that is the reflected propagation vector or the transmitted propagation vector so in terms of propagation constant or propagation vector this maxwell equations are modified and that maxwell equation should also be satisfied in case of oblique incidence so if i write in terms of propagation vector so maxwell's equation in terms of propagation vector is k dot e equal to 0 so delta that divergence should be replaced by or the del operator should be replaced by propagation vector k so k dot h should be zero for any wave this condition should be satisfied so when you writing the electric field or magnetic field for a plane wave uh, which is traveling uh, or reflecting with the oblique incidence you can consider this equation to be satisfied always and this is k cross e is equal to omega mu h and the complex conjugate of this and k cross h here we have if i take complex conjugate then minus omega epsilon e this uh, j will be replaced by minus j and um, that is only the magnitude part you can remember like that this is the procedure to remember you can derive this maxwell equation also but uh, there is no need of such derivation that's why i am not considering here so this maxwell equation should be satisfy for a wave to be a plane wave in oblique incidence also so now we are about to define the oblique incidence so let's consider a boundary this is a medium 1 and it is medium 2 so the boundary which is separating these two is z z equal to zero plane i am saying z equal to zero plane so that is z equal to zero means you can write xy plane so there is a xy plane which is separating these two medium so that is the me, uh, plane wave wave which is separating the two medium let's uh, right like this suppose this is the plane and this plane is separating the two medium so this is the boundary 
and left of this boundary we are having medium 1 and to the right we are having another medium. So, this is the boundary which is separating the two medium and normal to the boundary because this boundary we have considered as z equal to 0. So, this is a plane which we have written uh, which we kept like this you can kept like this if you kept like this then this will be the medium 1 and this would be the medium 2. But here the plane is this this is the plane we are writing uh, keeping like this and this plane which is defined as z equal to 0 is the boundary which is separating the two medium that means from here uh, from that side if I am seeing that if I consider this as a x axis. So, this is the x axis and the y should be in the anti clockwise direction if I draw the coordinate system. So, if this is x so in anti clockwise direction it should be y and it should be z. So, that means the y is outside the board ok. So, y if you want to represent here so y is outside the board. So, this is the coordinate system and this is the boundary which is separating the two medium. Now, if the wave is incidenting suppose wave is incidenting from here. So, this is having some propagation vector this pro this is the incident wave if I am writing it as incident wave. So, this incident wave is lying on which plane you can see that I have drawn this plane wave in x z plane because it is lying in the board itself. So, it means that this incident wave is lying in the x z plane and always the incident wave always makes angle with the normal of the boundary. So, normal to the boundary because this is the z equal to 0 plane. So, normal to the boundary z axis itself. So, whenever the wave will incident it will make an angle with the normal axis that is with the z axis here. So, this is the incident wave theta i and the some part of this wave can reflect. So, this is the reflected wave this is the reflected wave and some part of this wave can be transmitted. So, this is the transmitted wave now it makes angle with the normal to the boundary. So, this is theta r and this is theta t. So, this is the way we can represent a uh, wave which is incidenting at oblique incidence and with oblique incidence uh, as we say that the plane of incidence what is the definition of plane of incidence. So, the definition of plane of incidence is plane containing the incident wave. So, this board is containing the incident wave ok and the unit vector normal to the boundary. So, whatever boundary you consider the normal to the boundary that board should contain. So, the boundary is x y plane and normal to the boundary is z axis. So, this is the normal and this board which is a plane is containing the incident wave as well as the uh, unit vector normal to the boundary. Hence, we can say that this x z is the plane of incidence x z is plane of incidence x z is plane of incidence and x y is interface or boundary. Both the planes are different and that is very important here to identify these two plane plane of incidence in which the plane is incidenting and the unit vector containing the plane or the plane containing the unit vector is called plane of incidence. But the boundary is the plane which separates the two medium medium 1 and medium 2. So, similarly you can draw the figure like this also if this is the boundary if I say this is the boundary will say x equal to 0 that means y z plane is the boundary. And since this is x axis x equal to 0 plane, so this is suppose x axis. Now, for x greater than 0, this is the x greater than 0, we are having medium 2, and this is x less than 0, we are having medium 1. So, now the wave is incident from medium 1 to medium 2. So, some part of this is the wave incident wave. So, some part of wave is reflected back to the same medium and some part of it may be transmitted like this. 
so this is the transmitted wave and this is the reflected wave which is reflected back to the same medium now how do you uh, form an angle so because the boundary which separates the two medium is now like this this is the boundary and above this boundary we have a medium 1 or medium 2 above this we have a medium 2 and below this we have a medium 1 so this is the this hand is the boundary which is separating these two medium 1 and 2 and it is incidenting from medium 1 to medium 2 so the normal to the boundary uh, normal to the hand is this x axis itself so if this is the boundary the normal is x axis so all, always the plane wave makes an angle with the normal to the boundary and the normal is x axis so it will make an angle with the x axis and when we it reflects it also makes an angle with the x axis and when it transmit it also makes an angle with the x axis so this will be the representation of incident wave reflected wave and transmitted wave with angle and the what would be the plane of incidence if i say then the boundary is that this is the boundary this is the boundary y z and the plane of incidence is x and you can write it as z also so x z will be the plane of incidence or you can write it as y because this is the plane of incidence so if according to the coordinates if i say this is x this is y and this is z. so this time uh, x z is the plane of incidence again and the interface is y z so the boundary is y z and the plane of incidence if i write so again here it is x z plane of incidence is again x z now the question uh, is next definition how do you define this parallel polarization so let's define the parallel polarization and to define the parallel polarization we are considering the same figure we are considering the same figure this figure you can draw it again so now we are able to define this plane of incidence and this plane was also having the normal vector the normal to the boundary is this one because this time this is the normal to the boundary a n so this normal vector unit normal vector is x x unit normal vector is a x so this plane which we had drawn here is also having the plane of incidence which is y z and also the unit normal vector unit normal vector is a x because which is the norm, unit vector normal to the boundary so a plane which is containing the incident wave or propagation of incident wave or propagation of plane wave and also the unit vector normal to the boundary okay now we want to define a parallel polarization so parallel polarization if the electric field of uniform plane wave is parallel to the plane of incidence it is called parallel polarization so this is the propagation of plane wave and now we are saying that this incident wave will be having because this is a uniform plane wave so this incident wave is having electric field magnetic field and direction of propagation so the plane wave is always perpendicular uh, the plane wave has always electric field magnetic field and direction of propagation perpendicular to each other so if i consider the electric field suppose in this direction suppose wave is incidenting in this direction and it is represented by ki this is having the propagation vector of incident wave this is the propagation vector of reflected wave this is the propagation vector of transmitted wave vector if i am saying so you can represent it by vector quantity okay now the concern is that if the wave is traveling in this direction suppose the wave is traveling in this direction because these three are perpendicular to each other so suppose this is the plane wave traveling in this direction and this finger is showing the direction of electric field and the thumb is showing the direction of magnetic field so if i represent like this it means the wave is traveling in this direction and all are perpendicular to each other all these three are perpendicular to each other so that means this is the direction of electric field and if this is the direction of electric field then it can be resolved in two components one is this one 
and other is this one one is in the direction of x and other is in the direction of z which is negative z okay so uh, the minus sign it is showing that just the direction that is is going in the negative z direction so when you draw this electric field and when you resolve it what you are getting is the components of this electric field is parallel to the x axis and z axis so if i resolve this electric field it is going parallel with the x axis it is going parallel to the z axis so both the electric field are parallel the both the component of electric field are x and z and what is x and z the x and z are plane of incidence so what we had written here if the electric field of uniform plane wave is parallel to the plane of incidence so it is parallel to the plane of incidence because plane of incidence is x and z and electric field is also having component x and z so if these two are parallel to the x and z axis it means that it is an example of parallel polarization so when you write this diagram again you can represent it here parallel polarization this is the example of parallel polarization now what would be the example of perpendicular polarization suppose this is z axis this is x axis we are going to look for perpendicular polarization now suppose the wave is incidenting from here this is the incident wave and incident propagation vector and some part is reflected so this is kr and some part is transmitted that is kt and uh, this is the medium 2 and this is medium 1 always the reflected wave will be in the medium 1 so incident and reflected wave are in the left hand side that is that should be the medium 1 so it should making with the angle theta i theta r with the normal to the axis so z equal to 0 is the boundary so which is separating the two medium this is the boundary left medium 1 right medium 2 so this z axis is changing so this is z greater than 0 which is defining medium 2 and z less than 0 is medium 1 now suppose this is again the plane wave now the electric field is suppose this thumb is showing the direction of electric field if this thumb is the direction of electric field then what would happen it will be represented by dot so this is the direction of electric field now okay of incident wave this is the incident wave and the direction of electric field is represented by dot here and this dot is actually which axis so if you draw the coordinates x and this is the y axis and this is the z axis so outside the board is representing a y axis or the y coordinate and the electric field is in the direction of outside the board and outside the board because now the wave is same but now this time i am saying that my thumb is pointing the direction of electric field this time i was saying that my four finger is pointing the direction of electric field so that it can be resolved and it can be resolved in the direction of x and z that's why this is called plane of a uh, parallel polarization and here i am saying that my thumb is pointing the direction of electric field the direction of propagation is same but the direction of electric field has been changed and now the thumb is pointing the direction of electric field and since the electric field is in the y direction and the plane of incidence is xz it means that the electric field is perpendicular to the plane of incidence here we have written that if the electric field of uniform plane wave is perpendicular to the plane of incidence so here the plane of incidence is what here if i will ask you what is the plane of incidence so the plane of incidence is nothing but xz because it is containing the uniform plane wave and also unit normal vector to the boundary so this plane will be called as uniform a uh, plane of incidence and what is the boundary so the boundary is z equal to 0 plane that is xy plane 
Now the unit normal vector we have got, the incident wave we have got, the incident wave is having electric field in the y direction and that is why this is an example of perpendicular polarization. So whenever the question is asked to you for the perpendicular polarization, it, the electric field of the incident wave will always be having the direction perpendicular to the plane of incidence and the electric field is if the parallel to the plane of incidence it will be called as parallel polarization. So now we have got the these definitions and the basic diagram or the basic idea how to represent this parallel polarization and perpendicular polarization. Now we will consider how to represent this uniform plane wave ok, how to represent this uniform plane wave. So, for that the there will be some standard form of the equation like uh, we consider in the starting of this chapter if we want to represent a wave then that is always given as e naught e to the power minus alpha z cos of omega t minus beta z uh, and uh, a e whatever will be the direction a e or a h whatever you want to write. So, if you want to write electric field you write it as a e and if you want to write uh, magnetic field you write the direction of magnetic field a h but all are having just same representation. So, in the that way it is also having some component but as we saw that this electric field can be resolved here. So, if we resolve electric field then it may have x component, it may have y component, it may have z component. So, it can have any any of the direction. So, let us represent how to represent the plane wave with oblique incidence. So, representation of wave with oblique incidence ok. So, this would be suppose the electric field with suppressing the time factor ok, let us consider the time factor as well. Then if we resolve it may have x component, so let us co consider the coefficient of x and in the direction of x, electric field may have the y component as we did uh, resolve as we resolved in the case of parallel polarization it has x and z component. So, it may also possible that it has a y component and it may have a z component. So, actually any plane wave is the combination of parallel and perpendicular polarization we can write. This is a combination of parallel pol perpendicular polarization because the example which we consider first example was parallel polarization in which x and z was there. So, x and z was there and in the second example it was a y component is there. So, these two is forming a parallel polarization and the y component is forming a perpendicular polarization as the diagram which we consider. It is not always possible, but it, it depends on the uh, plane, but we can say from the previous two diagram that x and z are parallel polarized and the y is perpendicular polarized. Now, e to the power j omega t minus k dot r. This is the representation of plane wave. Whenever you want to uh, write the expression of plane wave with normal incident with oblique incidence you have to write equation in that way, this is important. Okay. So, here k is called propagation vector. This propagation vector is defined as k x a x cap plus k y a y cap plus k z a z cap. This is the propagation vector k x a x because as you have seen in the previous diagram if the wave is incidenting with making some angle like this k i and if it is x and this is z then this k i can also be resolved and if I resolve this propagation vector k i 
then it may have the x component and z component and y component. So, similarly this is also having a x component, y component and z component. So, we are defining it in general because we do not know about the plane. It may have any two component, it may have only three component, it may have only one component. We do not know about this. But we know that the plane wave is incidenting on a plane, so it will at least have two components. So, it is having at least two components, so which two components it will have we do not know. So, that is why we are writing in general it may have all components. Now, the beta that is known as phase constant of the medium, phase constant is defined as the magnitude of propagation vector, magnitude of propagation vector which is equal to root over k x square plus k y square plus k z square. And this phase constant or k is also known as wave number sometimes. So, wave number if it is written in, in the form of wave number then do not confuse with this, this is nothing but beta or k. Now, what is r here? So, the r is known as position vector. And this position vector can be x a x cap plus y a y cap plus z a z cap. This is the position vector. This is always fixed. We will not change in any part of the calculation value of r. The value of r will be same throughout every consideration. So, we have to take the k dot r. So, whatever we will get we will write according to the value of k because as you calculate the value of k dot r here suppose what you will get a x dot a x will be 1. So, we get k x into x, k y into y, k z into z this will be the k dot r. So, as you can see that if this z is some constant, so it means that equation of plane like 2x plus 3y plus 4z and so on. So, this is the k dot r. Let us consider uh, a one example for I consider for you that how to draw a figure if the equation is given to you. Okay. So, for example, Suppose the electric field is given in this form E naught x A x plus E naught y A y and E to the power j omega t minus 3 x plus y. So, from here we can write the value of k dot r. So, the value of k dot r is 3 x if I take the minus sign common because in the standard form see here the standard form minus sign should be there. So, I have to take the minus sign common and if I represent in this form e to the power j omega t minus sign is common. So, it should be 3 x minus y this would be the representation. So, k dot r is 3 x minus y. Now, the value of r is fixed, the value of r is fixed that x a x plus y a y plus z a z. Then what should be the value of k? So, the value of k should be to get this what should be the value of k? So, it should be 3 a x minus a y cap. If this is the value of k, then we after this dot product k dot r we will get this equation because this a x dot a x is 3 x and a y dot a y is minus y and a z is 0. So, in this way you have to write the propagation vector. So, once you get the propagation vector now you can calculate the value of beta which is the root over k x square k y square plus k z square that is the magnitude of vector k. So, this is the uh, if you calculate the magnitude of this vector beta you will get 3 square plus 1 square which is root 10. So, this is the value of beta for this example you can consider. Okay. So, if this is 3 x and y then just you have to write the unit vector whatever variable associated with the k dot r you have to write only the unit vector in case of k. So, this coefficient is 3 so 3 a x cap and the coefficient is minus 1 so minus a y cap so 3 a x minus a y. 
because I am not going to change the value of r. So, you have to consider the k in such a way that after dot product you should get the same value. So, for that you have to consider the coefficient of uh, k dot r in propagation vector. So, only consider the coefficient and the variable associated with this is the unit vector. The x is associated with this. So, we will multiply with the unit vector a x with 3. The associated variable is y. So, that is why unit vector will be a y with coefficient minus 1. So, that would be the value of beta. Now, let us draw it. if it is x and if it is y. So, the wave should incident in such a way, this is the equation of incident wave. So, the wave should incident in such a way that when the propagation vector is resolved, the x component should be positive from here you can see, this is the direction of propagation vector. So, the x component is positive and y should be negative. So, the x component should be positive and y should be negative that means the wave should incident from here. If the wave is incident from here, suppose this is the propagation vector of incident wave. So, the wave is incidenting from here now and it is suppose reflected back to this and transmitted some part in the next region let us say like this. So, this is the reflected wave, this is the transmitted wave I am saying, but the important thing is how you have to incident the wave. So, here the wave is incident with propagation vector k i and when I resolve this, I should get the x component positive, x component positive and y component negative. So, x component positive that is in the positive direction because this is x axis. So, it is in the positive direction and it is in the minus y direction because this is 0. So, this is the negative y. So, this is the uh, propagation vector which we can represent according to the equation the diagram is like this. Okay. So, here suppose uh, the boundary is y equal to 0. So, y greater than 0 is medium 1 and y less than 0 is medium 2, y greater than 0 medium 1, medium 2, y less than 0 we are assuming like this. So, y equal to 0 is the boundary. So, the incident wave will make an angle with the y axis. So, it will make an angle with y axis. So, this is theta i theta r theta t. This would be the representation. You can draw the same figure in a different way. <coughs> Suppose, this is the y and this is x. I just assume that y equal to 0 is the boundary, it may be anything, but the important thing is that you have to consider the plane x y and in such a way that x should be positive and y should be negative. So, if suppose I want to consider the wave to be incident from here. So, I want to have the x positive and y negative that means the x positive in downward direction and y negative that means in this direction. So, this should be the minus y axis. So, accordingly we can change the coordinates also. So, this should be the plus x axis and this should be the minus y axis. So, this would be the incident wave and it makes an angle suppose with the y axis because we consider the y equal to 0 is the boundary. So, with the uh, y axis it will make an angle. So, here it is reflected back k r and now it is transmitted to next region k t. So, here also you can see that y less than 0 is 2 and here also this is the y less than 0 part y less than 0 and it is let us define as medium 2 and this is y greater than 0 and it is medium 1. So, the wave is incident from here and it is reflected back to the same medium. So, that is the medium 1 and it is transmitted to the next medium that is medium 2 and it is making an angle with the y axis. So, this is theta r and theta t. So, when you resolve this incident wave, it is important that the equation given to you in the question 
that should be satisfied. So, if the wave is incident from here, so when you resolve it, you have to get the x component positive and y component negative and for that you can reverse the coordinates or you can reverse the axis. So, that is why when I am resolving this, I am getting this as negative direction. So, negative direction, but it should be having a positive value of x. So, that is why I kept the positive x axis downward and the negative x axis upward. So, I inverted the axis. So, this is the positive x axis, this is the negative x axis, but in this diagram, I have inverted it. And the y component we should get is in the negative y direction. So, this is minus k i y. So, this is in the negative y direction, this is our negative y axis and this is our positive y axis. So, in this way, uh, we can draw the figure according to our convenience, but the thing is we should follow the equation which is given to us. So, this is the representation of wave. We, here, we are not considering the parallel polarization and perpendicular polarization. Here, we are considering that how to decide plane of incidence and how to draw the figure with the equation given to us in case of oblique incidence. So, whenever the equation is given according to that equation, we can draw the figure and important thing is the in the question, the boundary is also given. Here, we assume uh, by our own convenience, the boundary is y equal to 0, but uh, if the boundary is x equal to 0, then the figure will be different. That will be the different case and if the boundary is x equal to 0, then there should be x axis that is varying uh, this separating these two medium and you can consider that also. Let us draw the figure for this if it is x axis, okay. if the boundary is x axis. Now, suppose the boundary is x axis like this, this is the x axis and I am saying that x equal to 0 is the boundary. So, this time this is the plane which is separating the two medium. So, when it is incident from here, it will be reflected back to the same medium. We are saying that x less than 0 is the medium 1 and x greater than 0 is the medium 2. Now, if wave is incident from here, we should have a incident propagation vector in such a way that it should have the x component positive and y component negative. So, when I resolve it, this is the x component in the positive direction. So, this will be k i x, but when I resolve it, it should go into the negative y direction. So, this axis should be a negative y axis and this axis should be plus y axis. Then only this equation will be satisfied with x equal to 0 boundary. So, if wave is incident, here it is reflected in the medium 1 itself and it is transmitted in the medium 2. So, this is the uh, and the boundary is x axis. So, it will make an angle with the x axis. So, this is theta i, theta r and theta t. Because the boundary is x equal to 0, it will make an angle with the x axis. So, that is why theta i, theta r and theta t we have represented. And since the x equal to 0 is the boundary, this is the boundary which is separating the two medium. This is medium 1, this is medium 2 and the wave when incidenting, it should satisfy the given equation. The given equation is should have the x positive and y negative. So, when I resolve it, the x component should go into the positive direction. For that, I have to take this as x axis and this should be the minus y axis because the wave is incidenting from here. If you want to in incident make it incident from here, then you can change the coordinates. So, this is the uh, way representation of a wave in case of oblique incidence. Now, we will uh, derive some Snell's law, uh, we will apply the Snell's law and how do we get the angles uh, in case of incident angle is given and uh, the transmitted angle we can calculate and some boundary condition which should be satisfied that will be considered. So, next is condition that must be satisfied for all value of x and y. So, let us write conditions that must be satisfied for all x and y. Omega i, first condition is omega i, omega r and omega t 
should be equal to omega that is known as frequency matching condition this is known as frequency matching condition and the second one is kix krx and ktx that is the transmitted propagation vector reflected propagation vector and the incident propagation vector in x direction is equal to kx and kiy is equal to kry is equal to kty is equal to ky this is called phase matching condition this should be satisfied let's consider this now suppose we are having a plane of incidence that is a xz plane so here we are assuming that xz plane is the plane of incidence and z equal to 0 plane is the boundary generally you will find this type of assumption only in the case of plane of incidence so this is z equal to 0 this is z greater than 0 we are having medium 2 so this medium 2 is lossless medium because we are assuming only the lossless medium so it is alpha 2 equal to 0 and this is medium 1 in which also alpha 1 is 0 because this is a lossless medium now the wave is incidenting so let us see wave is incidenting with the normal to the boundary is the z axis so it will make an angle with the z axis so this is theta i this is theta r this is k r this is theta r and this is k t propagation vector transmitted transmitted propagation vector incident propagation vector it will make an angle with the z axis so this will be the representation now we have to apply this boundary condition so let us consider this boundary condition k i x equal to k r x so when we resolve this what are the different components we will get so this is the k i in the direction of z this is k i in the direction of x if this is the reflected wave so if we resolve this we will get k r z in the negative direction and this is k i x k r x in the reflected wave in the x direction and here also we are having k t z and k t x now we want to apply this boundary condition that k i x equal to k r x so k i x equal to k r x means k i x into k r x so incident wave x component should be equal to the reflected wave x component so incident wave x component is if we resolve this we will get k i vector magnitude and if this angle is theta i so this angle will be theta i so this is k i x is the sine component so k i magnitude and sine of theta i it is equal to k r magnitude and sine again you can see that this is theta r so this is theta r so this is also a sine component so krx is also a kr vector magnitude and sine theta r so the magnitude of propagation vector of incident wave will give you the phase constant of incident wave and the magnitude of propagation vector of reflected wave will give you the uh, phase constant of the reflected wave and both the wave incident and reflected wave are lying in the medium one it means that the propagation uh, vector having a magnitude is giving you a phase constant which is only for the medium 1 because 
uh, the phase constant is defined with the help of characteristics parameter of medium and since the characteristics parameter does not change of medium 1 that is why whether you calculate the uh, magnitude of k i or you calculate the magnitude of k r both will give you the same phase constant that is it will be beta 1 sin theta i is equal to beta 1 sin theta r. So, this equation will give you the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection which is known as law of reflection. So, this is the theta i is equal to theta r which we also studies in uh, uh, ray optics uh, that the wave which is incidenting with the angle of incidence theta i reflects with the same angle theta r. So, theta i is equal to theta r. Now, let us consider this first and third because this should also be equal. So, this is k i x equal to k t x k i x equal to k t x. So, k i x equal to k t x means this is the incident propagation vector k i and x component is sin theta i and k t x. So, now k t x you can see that this is theta t this is also a theta t. So, in the normal direction this is a sin component. So, this is k t vector its magnitude and sin component sin theta t. So, k i magnitude is beta 1 sin theta i because this will give you the phase constant of medium 1. So, k i magnitude will give you the phase constant of medium 1 and k t magnitude and because the k t which is the propagation vector in the second medium. So, the constant the phase constant will be for the second medium. So, it would be beta 2 sin theta t. So, this is the important relation which we are going to use for the calculation of transmitted angle. So, this is the important equation. So, beta 1 sin theta is equal to beta 2 sin theta t and by using this equation we most of the case in we calculate the angle of transmission and angle of incidence if any one is given. Now, we can even expand this because uh, if suppose beta is equal to for lossless omega root mu epsilon. So, mu 1 epsilon 1 this is sin theta i and omega root over mu 2 epsilon 2 because both the medium are lossless. So, we can represent it like this sin theta t this omega and omega will get cancelled. If I multiply both the side by velocity of light that is c root over mu 1 epsilon 1 sin theta i is equal to c root over mu 2 epsilon 2 sin theta t. Now, this c into root over mu epsilon what it represents. So, if I represent the definition of refractive index see here refractive index n equal to this is the velocity of wave in vacuum divided by velocity of wave in medium. This is the definition and velocity of wave in vacuum is nothing but the velocity of light. So, it is c and we calculate the velocity of wave in any lossless medium by phase velocity vp which is also equal to root over mu epsilon 1 upon root over mu epsilon. So, 1 upon root over mu epsilon so it will go into the numerator c into root over mu epsilon. So, c into root over mu epsilon is actually the refractive index of medium 1. So, it is the refractive index of medium 1 which is represented by n sin theta i is equal to n 2 sin theta t this is the refractive index of second medium. So, n 1 sin theta i is equal to n 2 sin theta t. So, this is nothing but the Snell's law. This is Snell's law. So, from here we can uh, calculate or relate the angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and the eta 1 sin theta i is equal n 1 sin theta i is equal to n 2 sin theta t 
or we can calculate beta 1 sin theta is equal to beta 2 sin theta t. So, this is the most important equation which we will be using in case of parallel polarization perpendicular polarization and this is the Snell's law which we also study in our intermediate school classes 11th and 12th you can also study in that in the physics also we studied that. So, this is the uh, in general form the boundary condition that we uh, apply that is the condition that must be satisfied which is the frequency and phase matching condition in this case. Now, we will consider how to write the equation of electric field, incident electric field, reflected electric field, magnetic field, incident electric uh, magnetic field, reflected magnetic field, transmitted electric field, transmitted magnetic field as we did in case of normal incidence. And from there we define the equation uh, of the reflection coefficient, we also define the transmission coefficient and now here we will define the Brewster angle, what is the Brewster angle at which angle of incidence uh, we consider the angle is Brewster angle. So, that all we will define and next topic will be parallel polarization. One more thing that uh, you have to consider in this part is that how do you calculate the angle of incidence from this diagram. So, if once you have made this diagram how to calculate angle of incidence if the equation is given to you. You can see that this is the t value of theta i. Suppose if I perpendicular line up to this axis. So, this is the tan theta i and this is k i x. So, up to this distance this is k i x. So, this is the k i x and this is k i z. So, the angle of incidence you can calculate as tan theta i is equal to k i x divided by k i z. It is not always the case, but when you draw the figure you can calculate. It is not like that angle of incidence is always equal to x component divided by z component. It is not always the case, but whenever the uh, you write uh, the propagation vector from the equation given to you. Suppose the electric field equation is given to you and from there if you write the angle uh, the propagation vector of incident wave. So, after that you will draw the figure and after drawing the figure when you draw the perpendicular line to both the axis you will get the ratio as tan theta i and this tan theta i you can see that this is the ratio of x component and z component. So, whatever propagation constant you will get the coefficient of x and the coefficient of z the, take the ratio of these two you will get the theta i if the figure is like this and if the figure is different then the angle of this will also be different. So, when we will solve the numericals we will see the diagram let us say let I will do it for you. Suppose the electric field is given in this form whatever it is uh, important thing is we are considering that uh, 3x plus 4y ok in this way. So, the x component and uh, y component both should be positive. So, you will make the diagram in such a way that when you resolve the propagation vector you will get the x and y component positive. So, if this is x and this is y suppose then if the wave is incident from here then you will see the both the component this is the propagation vector and the both the component in, in positive direction this is k i x and this is k i y and if uh, this is theta i suppose if this is theta i means the normal is y axis ok. So, how do you calculate this angle of incidence? So, you will draw the perpendicular line in both the axis and this is theta i. So, this value divided by this value this value is k i y. So, this value is also k i y and this is k i x. So, now if I apply tan theta i it would be k i x divided by k i y. So, now it is different from the previous that I wrote because it depends on the plane. If the plane is x y it is like this and it depends on the uh, whether it is making an angle with the uh, y axis or x axis it also vary. So, the x component is having coefficient the x component is having coefficient 3. So, it is 3 and the y component is having coefficient 4. So, it is 4. So, now you can calculate the value of theta i and how it is the coefficient of x and y. So, I told you the variable associated with this you have to take the unit vector. So, if I write the k i vector incident propagation vector that would be 3 a x plus 4 a y. So, you have to associate the unit vector with the what which variable is associated with this. So, the variable associated with this is x. So, associate 3 with the unit vector a x. 
3 with unit vector ax and the unit vector here the variable is 4 y the variable is y so associate the unit vector a y with 4 4 into a y. So, this is the propagation vector this is the angle of incidence uh, this uh, in this way we can consider the angle of incidence and once the angle of incidence is known we can calculate the transmitted angle using this equation because this beta 1 and beta 2 will be known to us because the medium characteristics should always be given in the question. So, this beta 1 and beta 2 we can consider theta i we can calculate from the equation or the diagram directly and then we can calculate theta t and this type of question has been asked in gate. So, this is important concept that how to calculate angle of incidence from a given equation. So, next topic will be parallel polarization.